What's up guys, Virgil here for JRPG Central, and today we're going to be going over the February Nintendo Direct that happened just about a week ago now. Uh, I am a little late to the party on this, but uh, I did still want to make the video because it was a very, very JRPG dense direct, and there were a lot of cool stuff that came out of it. So if you haven't seen the direct or just didn't have time to watch it, this will have all the JRPG related announcements from the direct in one video, and I'm going to be giving some of my thoughts on each announcement and so on and so forth. So without any further ado, on to the video. So Super Smash Brothers is certainly not a JRPG, but it does have a character and it has many characters from many JRPGs, but the first DLC character Joker from Persona 5 is going to be in Smash. And the very first bit of anything JRPG related in the direct we got was a very, very, very small teaser. We got a look at his actual in-game model, though it was only from the back. And that was really all they said. Uh, we won't know more until he's released later this spring, or I think they said before April was over that he would be out, but gotta say that character model looking pretty good. Looking pretty nice. Next up, we got a release date for Dragon Quest Builders 2 for the Switch and for PS4, actually, both of which are going to be released on July 12th. Uh, I haven't spent any serious amount of time with this series, but I really need to check it out. It looks like Dragon Quest meets Minecraft with some deeper combat, which sounds right up my alley. So uh, I have the first one on PS4 and Switch, actually. Um, and again, I've, I've messed with them, but I just I haven't really given them the proper amount of time to really to really check them out. So I definitely need to do that. And right after this, we got a bit of a segue into my favorite JRPG announcement from the Direct, which should surprise no one, and that is that Dragon Quest XI-S is coming to the West with a ton of new stuff. So this is going to be the definitive edition of the game, it says so right in the title, and one of the, one of the features is that yes, we are getting the fully orchestrated soundtrack. Everybody rejoice, everybody who agreed with me rejoice. Everybody who disagreed with me and was mad at me for pooping on the soundtrack, uh, I don't know, don't rejoice, I don't know. Now, I want to make a separate video going into this version, so I won't go too much into detail of this version here. I'm going to save that for that whole video because I have some questions about that version and the exclusivity of that version. You can probably guess what the video is going to be about. But honestly, the full soundtrack would have been enough to get me to double dip. But this version also comes with a lot of other new things, like it has the Japanese voice acting, it has some of the 16-bit inspired stuff from the 3DS version that we never got. So this version definitely has a lot going for it, and like I said, for Switch owners, this is fantastic. It's, it's going to be the perfect way to play this game, and it's going to be the first way you play it, so that, that's fantastic for Switch owners. Next, we got a couple of great announcements for Rune Factory fans. First, Rune Factory 4 is being ported to the Switch as Rune Factory 4 Special. This new version will include an additional difficulty mode, as well as new in-game cutscenes and other features, I'm sure. I've never played the Rune Factory games, but this might be the one that uh, finally gets me to check out the series. Right after that, they also announced that Rune Factory 5 was currently in development for the Nintendo Switch, and I feel like I remember hearing some rumblings of uncertainty for the series future at one point. I could be making that up, but I feel like I saw that somewhere. So I'm sure this was a huge announcement for fans of the series. Next, we got an announcement of Tokyo RPG Factory's newest game, Oninaki. This will be the third game from this Square Enix development subsidiary, and seems to be an action RPG as opposed to a traditional turn-based game like their previous works. I wasn't a fan of I Am Setsuna, and I never played Lost Sphere. But with this one being a departure from the style of those two games, I'm actually pretty hopeful for this one. Though, if I were to guess, the price is probably going to be $50 or $60, which I think is outrageous, but oh well. It doesn't have a set launch, but it's supposed to come out sometime this summer. After that, we got to the main event of the Direct, the thing that the Direct was kind of advertised for, and that was a huge chunk of Fire Emblem Three Houses gameplay. This mostly went into the setting and story of the game as opposed to combat, which I kind of appreciated. It's it's kind of like a primer for before you even jump into the game. It kind of kind of already gives you a sense of of context for for what for what the world is like. They also announced a slight delay stating that the game would come out on July 26th. The game looks good for the most part, but with every new entry in the Fire Emblem series, I'm reminded more and more of how much I preferred when the series was 2D. I'm still going to give this one a try like all the others, but I, I really want a Fire Emblem game to capture me 
like those earlier titles did, and I don't know that that'll really ever happen again. And that kind of did it for the major announcements. Uh, after that, we got we got a few other ones after that that I'll just kind of run through really quickly. We got an amazing spoiler-free trailer for Deltarune, announcing that it would be coming to the Switch starting with the first chapter on February 28th. And we got release dates for Final Fantasy IX, which is available now, and Final Fantasy VII, which comes out on March 26th. Oh, and we're also getting a new Chocobo Mystery Dungeon game on March 20th, if those are your thing. Overall, I thought it was a fantastic direct. Obviously, I'm a bit biased, and if you didn't like JRPGs, I could see how this one might not have done it for you. But even then, we got some other great announcements like Mario Maker 2 and a Link's Awakening remake that I thought made for a pretty great showing. But I want to know what you guys thought of the direct. Do you think it was good? Did you want to see more Smash? Did you want to see Animal Crossing? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, or if you didn't, the thumbs down works too. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next video.